something shiny quickly caught my attention. It was Tinkerbell. I had stood on her and now she is dead. Peter Pan will never look at me the same. Oh, he's got his tongue. It's called <laughs> play. He has just one giant tooth that fills his entire mouth. Careful now, it's still hot. It was fair advice, because it was fucking on fire. But he's also got XXXX on the bookshelf. He's reading fucking porn. Intros are for YouTubers with an audience. Let's play Mushroom Oasis. What is your name? My name is Harry. That is my name. What's your cat's name? <gasps> Suggs. And your cat is? As hell. He was an indoor cat, but had the tendency or tenacity of a wild cat on a mission trying to leave wherever the door was open. Catty and playtime wasn't enough for the little mister. I figured he'd come home running if I left out some food by the porch. Three days later, still no cat. I've tried everything I could think of. Asking around the neighborhood, putting up missing cat posters, sadly nothing came from my efforts. I couldn't search for him during the day since I had work keeping me occupied. And there's only so many hours in an evening I could yell around the streets looking for him. This is sad. <laughs> there was only one place left I could think of that he might have ran off to. The woods by my house, right across the street. I definitely caught him eyeing the birds and squirrels that ran alongside the perimeters of the front window with his teeth, teeth? With his teeth clicking in excitement. Like that chattering, like that, I can't do it, I'm not going to try. <laughs> I was no outdoorsy person by any means. In fact, the thought of going there scares me. But I had to find him, or at least try. The first weekend that came around, I packed up some water, Suggs' favourite treats, and a compass to be safe. I wasn't sure where to begin looking for him, so I started walking in a straight line, calling out his name every few steps. Dot, dot, dot. It certainly didn't take me long to realise I was way over my head. In way over my head. You know what it fucking... Why did I think this was a good idea? It was hard to find my bearings within the surrounding trees. That is a lot of shrubbery indeed. Almost like it is a forest. A woods, perhaps. I didn't want to admit that I was lost. At least, not yet. I could only squint down at my compass as the needle spun slowly. Pretty sure they weren't made to do that. Did I really bring a busted compass on my first adventure out into these woods? Figured that would be just my luck. The only thing risking my own safety was my own incompetence. I shook my head hastily. No, no, no. No time for negativity. Suggs was out there somewhere, cold and lost and hungry. I had to keep moving. Darkness is falling. It's been hours. I'm so, so lost. I don't even know why I kept searching even after the moment I realized that. Why did I think this was a good idea? Hunger had been gnawing at my stomach for a while now, having missed breakfast and lunch all together. The heat and humidity from the afternoon sun was unbearable, but the cooling air did nothing to soothe me. Even if I were to head home, I couldn't even pinpoint where that was because my compass is busted. What do people even do in this situation? They get full bear grills with it, man. They just, they take off all their clothes and they start eating any hiker that walks by. I knew it. It was baseless optimism, but walking onwards was really the only thing I could think of to do. Excuse me while I go full goblin mode. I feel like this is, this is one of those games where you gotta be like goblin mode to enjoy it, you know what I mean? So ignore the fact we can't even see. I never should have said anything. Surely I'll come across something familiar. I trudged on, my shoes carefully avoiding the tree roots intertwined across the forest floor. But in my weakened state, plus the approaching darkness, I found myself stumbling through the rough terrain. My feet hit something soft jutting out of the ground. <coughs> my hands shot out as I lost my balance. My feet clumsily tried to find... Purchase as I wobbled backwards, arms a flapping. Oof. <coughs> what? My shoe had landed. Can you see my cursor? You can see my cursor this whole time. My shoe had landed smack dab in the circle of mushrooms, the brunt of it causing a wispy cloud to erupt from the cluster. 
I stuck my nose in my elbow to avoid breathing it in. I couldn't differentiate one tree from the other for the life of me, but I was pretty sure humans aren't supposed to inhale whatever that was. Spores. This is a zombie game. It's just like The Last of Us. It smelled strongly of rotting wood and wet dirt, even as it cleared. Something shiny quickly caught my attention. It was Tinkerbell. I had stood on her and now she is dead. Peter Pan will never look at me the same. I stooped down to pick it up, grasping underneath my breath. It was Suggs's collar, covered in whatever the hell those mushrooms released. I looked around desperately for any signs of him. Suggs? Suggs! I coughed from inhaling some of the remaining dust floating in the air. I should really steer clear from this. Pocketing Suggs's collar, I retreated carefully until I could breathe again. <sighs> Stepping back, I could still smell it. It must have stuck to my hair and clothes. A quick once-over confirmed my suspicions with a slight cringe. A thin yet generous coating of it covered my sleeves and jeans. Oh, I didn't realize this was smut. Oh! I leaned against a tree, dusting off my clothes in a naive attempt to get the dust and smell out, but to no avail. If anything, I felt like I'm just breathing in more of it. <laughs> this is taking a fucking strange turn. What, you, what used to be musty now turned sweet. <laughs> and I found myself inhaling even deeper, trying to pinpoint the smell. <laughs> Cucumbers? <laughs> it smelled like fresh cucumbers. A tingly feeling crept up my hands and neck. My pussy and my crack. <laughs> Pinprick spreading across my limbs as a strange heat reached my face. It was dripping down my gin. I started to feel drunk and woozy. My senses were numb. It should freak me out. And yet... A strange comfort washed over me. I should lie down. Right now, in fact. My legs gave out from under me, my body toppling over at an awkward angle. I laid there, and stared, and stared, and stared. It was nice here. A peaceful calm. The perfect place for a nap, even. My eyes grew heavy, and I swam in and out of consciousness. Oop. It's gonna be cringe. Hey, fuck it, we keep it in. My, yeah, a nap sounds really good right about now. Wee! Just having the worst trip you can imagine. <laughs> oh, sorry, this happened to you, little one. By the will of the forest, may you rest in peace. Hmm. Wait, a human? How'd you end up all the way out here? Still breathing too. Ah, oh, jeez. I can't leave you here. What should I do? I woke with a jolt. It was warm, but comfortably so. I could feel the weight of the blanket on me as I tried to sit up. I couldn't. I couldn't move my body. My fingers twitched uselessly at my sides as my eyes darted around in panic. Glancing about, I could see an interior of a cabin, or at least the ceiling of one. I couldn't see much past the corner of my eyes. Where was I? How, how did I get here? A desperate feeling rose in my chest. I had to leave. Right now. This was wrong. Wrong. Wrong! I wasn't meant to be here. I could hear the crackling of a fire nearby, likely the source of the warmth. I had felt on waking up. I could also hear footsteps approaching. Pretend to be asleep or stay awake. Stay awake, a sort dominant. Oh, hello. <laughs> I, <laughs> I fluttered my eyelids, straining to look at the person approaching. But a person it was not. It was a demon creature! Repent! Cringe. Why am I what has happened to me today? What the fuck? <laughs> my eyes widened as I took in their appearance, the protrusions from their forehead catching my attention. It was emo hair. I hadn't seen it since the early 2000s. Not to mention the Korean skin. <laughs> Another token of emos. <laughs> the stranger didn't sense my unease as they haved a sigh of relief. You're awake. 
That's good. Very, very good. How are you feeling? I blinked. Oh. So sorry, I forgot about that. Here. He pour <laughs> He pours molten lava <laughs> all over my chest and burns me and stitches me to the sheets below. The person held up a cup to my lips, a strong sweet smell coming from the rim. Fuck. <laughs> a gentle hand grabbed my chin to open my mouth. I couldn't even move to resist. Fuck. Don't worry, it'll help you feel better, I promise. Drink up! As the liquid hit my tongue, all I could feel was a vague sense of heat. As I kept drinking, taste and texture returned. The sweetness of berries and chamomile coated my taste buds. I could even detect a hint of mint. I lifted my head, finally, hands fisting to my sides as I propped myself onto my elbows. The person kept a steady hand on my chin, careful not to pour in too, careful not to pour too much in case I choked. Now that I've written, like I've read it as an as an erotic novel, I can't get it out of my fucking head now. I've ruined this game for me, and probably you, <laughs> or made it better depending on how you see green emo boys with mushrooms on their head. I finished every last drop, wiping my mouth with the back of my hand. I stared at my fingers, realizing I had full anatomy over my auto autonomy over my body again. Good as new. How are you feeling? B better, thank you. The stranger laughed. <laughs> oh, I like the way you sound. Been ages since I've talked to anyone, much less with a voice as nice as yours. <laughs> oh, I say. <laughs> Keep it in your pants, you little freak. You little green freak. I brushed off their strange compliment, finally looking around the cabin properly. It was a simple room filled with sparse but decorated wooden furniture, fit for someone living alone. An open archway to the right led to what I assumed was the kitchen. <clears throat> Fair assumption. The door next to it was shut. With an enormous door handle. Holy shit, the size of that bad boy. Then he's also got XXXX on the bookshelf. He's reading fucking porn. Next to it, the door was shut closed. Possibly a bathroom? Or maybe even a dungeon? <laughs> Taking it in, there was a common theme of knitted decorations strewn about. Any available surface had hand-patterned knitted tablecloths covering it. An unfinished project lay beside the bedside table, where I sat a pair of knitting needles jutting out of a pile of yarn from a small basket. Let's save pretty quickly. <clears throat> just in case. Just in case. It's good to save every now and again. It's always good to just take a second and save. As far as I could tell, it looked like the beginnings of a green scarf. I don't think green would look good on you, mate. <clears throat> it's not enough contrast in it. Maybe try a... What's the name of wine, but the colour of it? Burgundy. That's not wine, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Perhaps a burgundy scarf, my green chap. Hello. The stranger was comfortable in staying silent, observing me as I glanced around. <clears throat> they tossed their hat. Oh, it's a hat. I thought he actually just had, like, shroomed. They tossed their hat onto the bed, scruffing their hair and making it even messier. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get into the, uh, the emo. Get into the emo vibes. With their hat off, their... Unique features were impossible to ignore. S sorry, but what? What are you? Huh? Oh, I didn't introduce myself, did I? Hiya, I'm Michael, with a Y. I'm Gen Z. I shook my head. <laughs> Michael's not spelt with a Y. No, 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 I meant that. Um, Michael stared at me. Their left ear twitching. You look very... He snorted. <laughs> Ugly. Off-putting. No! Just different. Different, hmm? <laughs> You're just being nice. Well, then explain yourself. Um, I mean, that's kind of rude, isn't it? 
I paused for a moment before pinching my nose bridge, exhaling slowly. I'm... I'm just... Sorry. It's been a long day, so... I should be thanking you. If it helps, it's a... skin condition? Is that what you humans call them? The way he said it didn't sound confident. And the ears? Um... Genetics? Right. And I assume the little... I waved vaguely at their... Horns? Antennae? Those things are just cosplay to complete the look? W would that make a convincing argument? I squinted. Maybe. Then yeah, it's... Cos... Oh, he's got his top. It's cosplay. It doesn't explain everything. Michael huffed a nervous laugh. <laughs> Listen, I'm just a guy living by himself in the woods. You don't need to worry yourself any further than that, okay? Something in his tone compelled you not to question his existence anymore. He's just some guy living in the woods. Completely normal. <laughs> right. <laughs> Completely normal. I'm Harry. <laughs> Michael beamed. <laughs> nice to meet you, Harry. I fiddled with the blankets as Michael scooted closer from the edge of the bed. I I know I already asked, but how are you feeling? Any aches, sores, and nausea? Intrusive thoughts? Weird impulses? Fever, maybe? I think you might be lovesick. He placed his hand on my forehead before I could react. Oh. His hands were calloused, quickly retracting as he gave a thoughtful hum. Hmm. You seem to be lucid. No, I'm Harry. Oh, Lucy. What the fuck? You don't listen. That's a good sign. Uh, great. He hummed absently, twitching his ear, reminding him of the perturbed cat. Cat? My cat! Oh, shoot. S sorry, this came out of nowhere, but have you seen a cat around these parts? His name is Suggs. He's a sweet little thing, about this big, a skittish, but he can be approached to strangers if he needs to. <clears throat> I pulled out my phone to show him pictures of him, only to find it missing from my back pocket. Wait, where is it? I haven't. Huh? Your cat? I, I haven't seen it. Oh, I... I see. I slumped against the pillows, rubbing at my temples. He lost his collar, too. Even if anyone finds him, they wouldn't be able to tell where he's from. Damn it. I knew I should have got him chipped. Michael stayed quiet, watching me from the side of the bed. <clears throat> you, you came all the way out here for a cat. Hmm? Of course. To the point of where you're willing to run yourself ragged this deep in a forest. For a cat. Do you realize how far you've wandered away from the nearest town? I found you near unconscious, in an area nobody's set foot in for years. For a cat. He sounded like he was holding himself back from giving me a stern lecture, as, in, as if in disbelief I had such little regard for my own survival. My cheeks grew heated at how stupid reckless that sounds. I, I, I mean, he's not just a cat, he's my family. I, I know it was stupid for even trying, but I had to. Michael eased up, shoulders tense as he looks... <clears throat> Michael eased up, shoulders tense as he looked over at me from his, underneath his unruly bangs. Family, huh? He finally tipped his head at me with a smile. You're willing to wander this far for such a small critter. I've met my fair share of lost campers, hunters, and runaway teens or two. But someone looking for their pet? <laughs> You're kind of weird, aren't you? I sputtered, much to his amusement. <laughs> Speak for yourself, you little raspberry schlockling boy. Who cosplays in the middle of the woods? Michael laughed, a deep, hearty, resonating from his chest. 
Yeah. Hmm. I th I think I'm starting to like you, Harry. Uh, likewise. His smile widened, but something about it was off. He has just one giant tooth that fills his entire mouth. <laughs> it was unsettling. I felt like he hadn't talked to someone in a real long time and forgot how to smile the right amount. I rubbed my neck, trying to think of something else to say. Can I ask, how did I get here? Oh, like I said, I found you in the woods not far from here. Oh, jeez, really? I knew I was tired, but I couldn't have possibly... Uh-huh, did I step into something... Something... Important? Familiar pinpricks crept up my skin. Uh, home. I need to go home. Michael stiffened as he grabbed my shoulder. Uh, never mind that. You'd fallen unconscious from... Uh, heat stroke. Heat stroke? No, no, that wasn't what happened. I, I, I wasn't. I was fine up until Michael shook his head incessantly, leaning close. No, 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 Firefly. You weren't fine at all. He's already given me a nickname. <laughs> oh, you, Michael with a Y. If I hadn't found you when I did, I... Well, who knows what would have happened. You could have gotten injured or attacked by a wild animal. There's danger in these woods, you know. No, he was right. You had been so foolish. How did you think you could do this on your own? He's gaslighting me. <laughs> Searching for your cat in the middle of the woods. And to go out without bringing any water? Passing out from heat stroke of all things. How could you have been so stupid? I shook my head, brain too foggy to pick apart my thoughts. He sounded so confident. Why should you doubt him? Well, if it means anything, I'm glad you were there. Michael relaxed his hand on his lap once more. He grinned at me. So am I, Harry. I'm definitely glad I found you. Oh dear, I'm turning blue. His eyes were fully hidden behind his unruly hair. But I couldn't help but feeling how intensely they were fixated onto me as, as he said that. I need to go to a reading class. <laughs> the hairs on the back of my neck stood. Uh, sure. Without a distraction, I had only just realized how uncomfortable I was sitting still. I just had like a really meta moment because like... The blanket on me was starting to itch just as desperate, just as the desperate need to get home began to rise in me again. Focus, hello? Look at me. Um, look at me. The blanket on me was starting to itch just as the desperate need to get home began to rise in me again. Um, this, this was interesting, but I should really get going now. Wait. My host jumped up from the bed before I could. I, I mean, you can't. I can't let you just wander around in the woods this late. Please, just stay a bit longer. But Michael, co come. He grabbed my hand and led me across the room. We stepped into the kitchen, a fragrant smell of cooked potatoes and meat hanging in the air. Who cooks when it's hanging in the air? What is this, a kebab shop? Two plates had been set out on a small circular table, complete with utensils and mugs of tea. I I wasn't expecting guests today, so the food's nothing fancy. But join me for dinner? He looked so hopeful, ears drooping. You'd feel so bad if you had to say no. I'm being gaslit. Say no, say yes. I mean, I'm not going to go out in the pissing night when I couldn't even find my way around in the daytime. Of course I'm going to stay with you. You handsome fuck. <laughs> Michael's jaw dropped for a second time before he quickly recovered. I, yeah, yes, of course. Here, here, come sit. I'll serve up the cottage pie in a minute. As I sat as instructed, my stomach rumbling something fierce as the smell was the only thing I could focus on. Fuck my cat. Who is he? What was his name? I got food on the way. 
Yes, it was definitely the right choice. Fuck that cat, bro. What was so important that you had to leave so soon anyways? The outside world can wait, and Suggs can fend for himself. You should stay here, and enjoy the company. Oh? Actually, I should ask, are you okay with meat for dinner? I could make something else for you if it's not your preference. I'm okay with meat. Oh, okay. You'll be having some of the same dinner as me then. Oh my god, it's gonna be Suggs. <laughs> Got a hiccup. I suppressed it. I put a hex on it. <laughs> Michael Patton. <laughs> Michael patterned out the small kitchen with an almost giddy excitement. He put on a pair of knitted oven mitts, humming as he stooped down and pulled out the steaming tray of pie from the wood stove. The smell. It filled the entire kitchen in an instant as he brought it to the table. My stomach rumbled louder, loudly in response. I'm pretty sure Michael could hear it. But he just smiled as he served up our portions. He discreetly cut me a bigger piece, which I was grateful for. Because I'm an obese, overweight fuck and I just can't get my fill. It looked so good. The crust was golden in colour, streaked with crispy lines and garnish. The meat and veggie filling looked absolutely delectable, the savoury sauce leaking onto the plate. My mouth was watering, unsurprising considering the fact I hadn't eaten all day. Careful now, it's still hot. It was fair advice, because it was fucking on fire. But I didn't <laughs> But I didn't wait more than <laughs> Fuck, I need to stop laughing at my own fucking dumb It's not even a joke. My dumb remarks. I need to stop. But I didn't want to wait more than two blows before biting into my first forkful. <laughs> it was definitely way too hot to eat straight from the oven. Michael kept a polite expression, the corner of his mouth lifting as I panted with the piece still in my mouth. He gave me a few seconds to recover, elbow planted on the table. Eh, is it good? I nodded vigorously, even though my taste buds were burning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I couldn't taste anything. He laughed. <laughs> it's usually better on the second bite. I slowed down, hand on my mouth, as Michael poked his fork into his slice. I tentatively blew on the pie to make sure it was cool before taking another bite. He was right. The second bite was a lot better. The seasoned potato crust had a nice and crisp on top, cheesy and creamy in the middle. The savoury meat filling was well cooked and bursting with flavour. It's my cat. <laughs> I'm eating my cat. Every f Oh, it felt like home. Oh, no, that's so sad. My host watched me enjoy the meal from across the table. Do you like it? Mmm, yeah, this tastes amazing, Michael. He flushed from the compliment, rubbing the back of his neck. <laughs> I'm glad. I like to think of myself as a decent, decent, a decent cook. Sorry, I've burnt my tongue. I like to think of myself as a decent cook. I've never been able to get anyone else's opinion on that. Do you like bacon in particular? <laughs> hmm. Not always. I usually go for simple dishes with any ingredients available. I nodded down amicably, though it didn't say much else. I was more focused on scarfing down dinner, which thankfully Michael didn't seem to mind. The overall atmosphere was nice and homely. I could hear Michael tapping his feet from underneath the table. I guess he was that happy to have someone stay for dinner? It did seem like he lived alone, judging from the surroundings in his cabin. So, I'm kind of curious. He perked up instantly, his focus solely on me. What made you want to live all the way out here? Oh. Well, when you look like me, it's kind of easier to just live out of sight from everyone else. A pang of guilt shot through the, my chest. I was giving him a hard time about how he looked too. He must have sensed it clear as day on my face. No, no. You're not one of them. You've actually been much nicer than most. Though I wonder if... His smile turned strained. Never mind. My point is, it's better here than anywhere else. Except Comic Cons. I tend to blend in there. It's when I get my shopping done, when there's a convention in town. Why don't you try the tea, Firefly? Oh, I like Firefly. Oh, it's cute. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed uncomfortable now, easing into a different topic. It's probably best to follow along. 
Oh, sure. I reached out towards my mu- Only to push it off the edge with my clumsy fingers. Wait! Uh, I bent over the side to grab it, fully expecting it to fall just out of reach and land on the floor into broken pelithid. It never did. Oh, Michael. You're, um... You're very well endowed. Instead, a long green appendage was twisted around the ceramic mug, securely keeping it in place. Not even a drop had fallen out. My eyes trailed along the length of it until I pinpointed that it came from behind Michael. The rest of it part partially hidden behind his cardigan. M Michael? Is that yours? I, I... Michael buried his face in his hands, the strange appendage from before lowering to his side, mug in tow. I'm sorry, Harry, I... I think... I think it's time I was honest. Oh, that's a lot of eyeballs. <laughs> he lifted his head, fingers carting back his hair to reveal his eyes. I froze, as two... No, no. Multiple pairs of irises stared right into mine before darting side to side to avoid my gaze. I I know it's a lot to take in, but this is who I, I really am. Please, please don't be scared. Freak the fuck out. <laughs> Let's save again. Yes, we'll back in. We'll probably play this again, because there's multiple. I feel like there's multiple endings. I feel like I'd probably be like, chat, be like, what the fuck? This is cool. I swallowed audibly willing myself to not look away. He seemed to be holding his breath as I gripped the edge of the table. It felt unsettling every time he blinked those eyes in succession, even when he wasn't looking at me. Was it real? It had to be. Everything about him suddenly made so much more sense. The isolation. The avoidant behaviour. He looked freaky, yes. But he also looked sad. I... I swallowed thickly. I... I'm not scared. Michael's many pupils blew wide, dilating like an excited wildcat. It sent a shiver up my spine. Uh, okay. Maybe just a little bit scared. Uh, so sorry. He hastily grabbed an empty plate and hid behind it, shoulders scrunched up despite his stature. Would it help if I just hide it? I, I could fix my hair like before, if, if that's what you prefer. His voice was muffled behind the ceramic barrier between us. It was kind of endearing. I slowly reached out to touch his hand, the slight brush of my fingertips making him jump in place. Michael? Yes? Can you put that down? Hmm... He slowly lowered the plate. His eyes were still darted to the side, avoiding me. Can, can you look at me? I can fix you. <laughs> Ooh, look at the ears. They came out in full effect. <clears throat> Don't look at me like that. Sorry, sorry. I just, I, I can't stop looking. This was so awkward. His hands were shaking. I looked down at the mug still floating next to him, hanging on for dear life. I reached over and plucked it straight out of his grasp. Wink. Uh. I tentatively took a sip and noticing how Michael, Michael, noticing how Michael was watching over the rim of the mug was watching. Yeah. I tentatively took a sip, noticing how Michael was watching over me from the rim of the mug. The taste was mildly spicy, with an almost earthy bite to it. I recognized it instantly. As ginger tea. It's almost room temperature, but it's still pretty good. Uh huh. You wanted me to try the tea, right? I I like it, so thank you. Oh oh oh, I'm glad. Michael relaxed back into his seat, following my lead as I picked up my fork once more. The silence didn't last long as Michael fidgeted. Are, uh, are you really okay with this? With me? I gave him a once over, really taking in his features. He was a freaky looking dude. But I had dated worse. 
it's very different than what I'm used to, but I think I can learn to like it. Is that weird to say? I I mean I mean you're not you're not bad to look at. It's actually kind of fucking hot. <laughs> damn it, damn it, damn it! What do I say? Oh, I can say hot. <laughs> fuck. Oh no, this is a choice. I really don't know how to. Oh fuck. <laughs> I, I, I said hot, instinctively. Uh, hot? <laughs> you're, you're referring to the temperature. You're not referring to the temperature, are you? No. No, I am not. Get in me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he looked confused. But seemed embarrassed anyway. <laughs> That's like what my brain is feeling. Me and Michael. Me, my brain and Michael are just like on the same wavelength and my body is just like cock blocking. Not even cock. You know, you know what I'm trying to say. I don't know what I'm, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> oh. My point is, your appearance shouldn't matter. You've been nothing but kind to me so far. I'd be the worst kind of person to judge someone based on how they looked. I haven't known you for that long, but you seem like a good person. You're fine, Michael. I smiled at him. We're fine. I... I, I see. He fidgeted some more before nodding, smiling a bit. Uh, thanks, Harry. The big eye- oh, what well, big eyes you have, Grandma. <laughs> I'll cherish this moment forever. He beamed at me enthusiastically, and then went back to eating his food. Nom nom nom. That was something. We continued with a bit of small talk, mostly stories about songs or snippets from my personal life. Quick save. <laughs> Michael hung on to every word I said, not bothering to elaborate much about himself despite my burning curiosity. I could tell he was extremely insecure about his appearance, so it's probably best to keep my questions to myself for tonight. We cleared up the kitchen in relative silence, Michael storing away at the rest of the pie as I washed the dishes by the sink. Being out here in this remote cabin, I wondered how he had running water. Maybe I'll ask him later. So, thanks for dinner. Thanks for the company. Oh, and please, take the bed tonight. Is it going to give us an option to sleep in the same bed? <laughs> but... but Ah, uh, you're my guest, and I'm the host. Take the bed, okay? Uh, all right, but I'll be out of your hair first thing in the morning. Michael got quiet, staring at the floorboards. He was looking down at every other person he had buried under there. With his hair out of the way, I could finally read his expressions. He did seem upset. Is that okay? I, I, I do need your help, though. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to get lost again on my own anyways. His tail flicked behind him. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring you home tomorrow morning. I heaved a sigh of relief. Thanks, Michael. I'll see you in the morning. Y yeah. Um, good night, Harry. Good night, Michael. He seemed really happy being able to say that. I plopped myself down onto Michael's bed, getting comfy beneath the blanket. Michael was gathering some blankets of his own to make a makeshift bed on the floor in front of the fire. He had an impressive collection of knitted items and a comfort nest forming in the centre of the room. My eyes trailed after his tail. Now out in the open, it flicked and swayed. Kinda like... a cat. I miss Suggs. Now with a full ex a, st a stomach full of sugs, dozing off became easy. I didn't even realise how tired I was. I listened to the gentle crackling of the fire, my vision darkening. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that like fucked me up a little bit. It's startling. Good night, Harry. <laughs> 